is an old saying, but the camera doesn't lie. Certainly the wing gun cameras in use in this war have revealed the facts of aerial warfare in no uncertain terms. Synchronized with the action of the wing guns, they reveal the hits and misses. A train is hit. A truck is demolished as the plane skims the treetops in its pullout. A locomotive is exploded. An enemy plane blows up in midair. Incendiary bullets have reached the gas tanks. Another enemy plane is disabled. The pilot hurtles through the air. The pictures look good when they're our pictures. But in German centers of air operation, the same sort of films are projected, studied. Here we see for the first time captured German pictures of B-17s under attack by enemy fighter squadrons. Enemy's air strength has been greatly reduced. These captured films bear silent testimony to the fact that it has not been without loss to our own forces. The German films continue to show the wreckage of fallen B 17s and the capture and interrogation of American crews who, as prisoners of war, will join the long list of American prisoners taken by Germany since the war began. And here rest a few of our more than 120,000 dead. Meanwhile, on the other side of the world, our forces push further into the Philippines, to Ormoc and Mindoro, on the road to Luzon. And among our enemies is Storm, as an American carrier plows through the seas, whipped by a 70-mile-an-hour wind. Every plane must be lashed to the deck in face of gales which threaten to sweep them into the sea. Rudders and elevators must be held rigid against the force of the winds. This was the storm that cost the loss of three destroyers and the lives of 500 men. But whatever the weather, the timetables of attack must be met it was heavy weather when our forces doubled around through Surigao Strait to hit Leyte from the west in a surprise landing near Ormoc. Bombardment drives the defenders inland. Tracers search out enemy positions. As they close in, light gunfire and rockets precede the advance of armored amphibians. Then the landing craft push in. <laughs> Veterans of Guam, men of the 77th Division, hit the beach south of Ormoc at exactly seven minutes past seven. They like that number seven. Within three hours, the beachhead was secure and the ships were unloaded. The Ormoc landing did not conclude the battle for Leyte, but it decided it then and there. For the Japs, the Leyte campaign was one of the bloodiest battles yet fought, with many thousands of Japanese killed and a relatively few hundred taken prisoner. Tank mortars drive the Japs to cover. Flamethrowers flush the defenders from their holes. Anti-personnel bombs scatter death in the dusty air. The casualties are many, but suffering and death is held at a minimum by the prompt action of medical corpsmen with their surrettes and their blood plasma. Today, even live blood plays a part.
blood from America refrigerated and flown under highest priority across the Pacific in the giant planes of the Naval Air Transport Service. Within a matter of hours, fresh blood is available for use on the battlefields of the Philippines. A U.S. destroyer is hit offshore. Damaged by Jap aircraft, it struggles against fire and explosion until the order abandoned ship forces all hands to take to the water. Other ships in the force stand by to pick up the survivors, bobbing on the waves in rubber rafts. The life of their ship, which took months to build, ends in a column of smoke. Meanwhile, we push on to Mindoro, two days and two nights by sea from Leyte, 600 miles away. Again, the combination of sea and air power drives the enemy inland, paves the way for the advance of landing craft. U.S. ships throw up a wall of Akak, picking off counter-attacking Japanese fighters. Once more, the troops hit the beach. This time, there is little opposition. The bombardment has done its job. The landing on Mindoro is quickly established. The beachhead is soon fortified by whole shiploads of heavy equipment. Fuel, oil, 100 octane gasoline must be brought in. Machine shops with spare parts and repair depots must be established in order that Mindoro may become a power in the steps succeeding to Luzon. <laughs> Meanwhile, the newly established B-29 base on Saipan takes a heavy attack from Japanese land-based bombers. Again, the product of many months' labor is sacrificed to the flames of war. The only answer is to replace planes quickly and keep our stockpiles high until our final victory is assured. The air offensive is only momentarily delayed, for the 21st Bomber Command knows its business. In the first month of operations from Saipan, they drop more than 1,500 tons of bombs on the aircraft factories of Tokyo and Nagoya. go again. Destination Tokyo. Objective, to encourage a little absenteeism in Japanese aircraft plants, to disrupt the flow of improved Jap fighter and bomber planes. It's 1,465 miles from Saipan to our target. And then it's about 30,000 feet straight down to Tokyo itself, and another blow at Japanese aircraft production. As we drive ever nearer to our objective, we must overproduce if necessary to overpower our enemies with the planes and the weapons of attack. <laughs> 